my dear colleagues, I rise on a matter of personal and collective privilege. August 9 marked a momentous day for indigenous peoples all over the world and in the Philippines because yesterday we celebrated the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples and the Philippine National IP Day. Way back in 2015, we sponsored Republic Act Number 10689 in this chamber, which declared August 9 as National Indigenous Peoples Day in recognition and protection of the rights and causes of the IPs across the country. Pagkalipas ng pitong taon, labis ko pong kinagagalak na makitang mas binigyan ng halaga ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino ang ating mga kapatid na katutubo. Every day, we see more Filipinos transforming their traditional textiles, their materials into beautiful contemporary pieces such as clothing, furniture, artisan works, artworks. We also see an outpouring of public support for such creations. It is no secret that I, together with many of our colleagues, have a deep love and appreciation for these so-called tropical fabrics and native products. Indeed, today is a fitting recognition of our IPs who give meaning to our identity as Filipinos. As we honor our IP brothers and sisters, the betters of our cultural diversity and their overwhelming contribution to our rich arts, culture, and heritage, may we also be reminded of how far we still need to go. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, nararapat nating bigyang pansin ang mga pangangailangan ng ating mga katutubong Pilipino at bigyang lunas ang kanilang mga suliranin, lalo na sa panahon ng pandemya. There are 110 indigenous peoples groups in the Philippines, with each community possessing their own traditional knowledge and practices. More than expressing our appreciation for them, August 9 should serve as a constant reminder that we should provide the needed support for IPs to strengthen their part in nation building. It is also a timely reminder for us to craft and promote measures that benefit our IPs and value their rights as we continue to protect our cultural heritage amid the challenges of modernization. The ways and means of our IPs may be considered ancient by some compared to those of modern society, but everything that defines us as Filipinos is rooted in its creativity, resourcefulness, passion of our forefathers. For these reasons, we continue to advocate for policies and programs that would give respect, recognition due to our IPs. We have the National Museum's Baybayin Gallery and the Malilika ng Bayan Gallery. We have dedicated efforts also in reviving the age-old tradition of weaving, creating the country's first permanent textile gallery, Hibla ng Lahing Filipino, and the traveling exhibition before the pandemic to destinations like New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Geneva, Singapore by our weavers and some of our IPs. We've also supported the schools of living traditions, as well as a documentation of indigenous and traditional practices. As a legislator, we have jointly advocated for the strength and protection of the rights and cultural heritage of our IPs. Then in 2011, way back, we successfully organized regional assemblies in Baguio for the Luzon IPs, in Davao del Norte for the Mindanao IPs, in Iloilo for the Visayan IPs, and the first National Indigenous Cultural Summit that served as avenues for dialogue with local and national policymakers as well as international institutions. As Congresswoman of Antique, and we have indigenous peoples, we have the Irenon Bukidnon, we have the Atis as well. We filed the resolution at the time to protect their indigenous heritage, but this was in relation to Cordillera garments that were counterfeited fabrics from abroad that copied Cordillera fabrics. Mas kina po tayo representante ng Panay noon ay humingi po ng tulong ating makapatid na taga Benguet 
at sa abra at sa iba't ibang mga may katutubo na kinokopya po ng bansa sa Asia ang kanilang mga disenyo na walang paalam. In my return to the Senate this 19th Congress, we filed several measures. Senate Bill 831, it underscores the role of our indigenous communities as partners in the conservation and preservation of our protected areas with their ancestral domains. We have the IP Resource Centers Bill, as well as Senate Bill 839, or the proposed traditional property rights of IPs, which seek to support traditional artists and artisans by ensuring that their rights are safeguarded. As a sign of gratitude for our work, the cultural communities of Mindanao, way back, adopted me as Bay Matumpis, which means literally the one who takes care. These are just a few of our um, strides in protecting and promoting the rights of our IPs, their culture, and their heritage. Despite these, there is still much to be done. Imagine how much more we can accomplish if we further prioritize programs and initiatives aimed in addressing the needs and issues of our indigenous communities. That is why, Mr. President, my esteemed colleagues, as we honor the rich and vibrant culture of our IPs, I also urge each and every one of us to rise to the challenge and join me as by Matumpis. Together, let us all be the ones who take care. And I know that Bukidnon has a very rich IP culture as well, and I have seen the Senate President and his father uh, promote their uh, indigenous people's uh, tangible and intangible heritage. The Bulacan uh, IPs, the Dumagats uh, of our, and, and Aurora also has the um, Dumagats. Dumagats as well. The Dumagats of Bulacan, Dumagats Aurora. I can go on and on as well as the minority leaders um, province in uh, Misamis Oriental has IPs as well. So this is more than 110. With that, um, I thank you for your patience, for your indulgence, for listening to me once again. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. We are always honored to listen to your speeches because it is it makes us richer.